Hi everybody, Alex the Ploy here from Expert Forex and in this video I'm going to show you how to use optimization to find the very best settings for your robot. Now the difference is I'm actually going to show you, this is going to be a working session, you're going to see me do all the activities that I'm going to suggest that you follow. Now that also means that this might be a long video, so put aside some time. There's a lot of detail in what I'm going to be doing, and hopefully you're going to find this educational and of a lot of value. So in this video, we're going to be doing a couple of specific tests, and the most important thing that you need to set out on is set objectives for your test. Then you've got to set up the optimization process, and you've got to create a meaningful template to test your results on. And again, don't worry, I'm going to show you all that in a quite a bit of detail. Then you're going to create a base case results. But the most important thing then is to transform those base case results into settings that you can use to test further. And again, I'll show you that. Now, what we're going to do specifically in, in today's video is we're going to test four pruning options that are available in the grid trend multiplier. But the process that I'm going to follow will apply to any trading robot. You can test alternatives to those robots and I'll show you how. Then we're going to test the quality of the results. And then we're going to take it one step further. We're going to view the best settings trading on charts and then we're going to close and review the whole process again so let's start with the objectives of the testing firstly i always test to determine the strengths and weakness of the trading robot and then i'll have a look at the profit and draw down levels and ratios because that gives me a feel of the risks involved and then it teaches me about the robot because then the is the challenge to find ways to reduce risk and improve profitability. We're going to be doing that. And then very specific to this particular test is I want to find out which of the four pruning methods are the most efficient. And then lastly, and this is normally number one on most people's list, is to find potential settings that they can then put into their demo accounts to test. Okay, so that covers the objectives for today's testing. Let's move on to step two, which is setting up for optimization. Now, the first thing that you do need if you're going to do any optimization is quality data. Now, I must stress here that your broker data is the lowest quality data and also the lowest quantity data that you'll ever find. So I have never used broker data. I use historical tick data. So why is that? Let me show you practically an element of the quality of broker data. So here I am on a MT4 platform. And what you then do is you go into tools and you'll find the history center. Now the history center contains the information that is displayed on the charts. So you go in there and here you can see the history that is used on the charts. So, uh, and let's take the example that it's opened up with. Here's the Aussie yen and you can see you get one minute, five minutes and so on and so on. And currently open is the four hour chart. So let's see what information is, is displayed on the charts. Firstly, the open price, then the high price, the low price, and the close price. And, and th those are the only bits of information that MT4 needs to create candles. But when you're trading a robot, you might have a stop and a target and, and those kind of elements in your strategy. And you don't know whether, and let's just take the extreme example, let's say your stop and your target has found itself into the same candle. So your target is there, you stop. So the robot comes in on this historical data supplied by a broker and it looks at it and it doesn't know whether the high was reached first 
the low was reached first, it doesn't know. And unfortunately, the target is at the high and the stop is at the low. So what did the price do? Did it hit the stop first or did it hit the target first? So those are the uncertainties that candle trading brings in. So when you are using your broker's data, that is what you are using. You're using that basic data and the ear has to make an assumption sometimes it makes the most optimistic assumption sometimes it makes the most pessimistic assumption so rule number one never use your broker's data it you can use it but use it as a, a very high level guide because it's going to be inaccurate and while we here and i can't show you this because this uh, demo account has been running for most probably two years the brokers limit the amount of data that they supply so if you were to open a demo account now you would see that the one minute only goes back uh, four or five days. The five minute only goes back two weeks and, and so on and so on. So the broker is no longer supplying huge amounts of data. So if you want to suddenly test a five minute strategy, you've only got two weeks of data to use. So firstly, the quality is bad and the quantity is bad on broker, broker data. So what is the solution? I use a service that supplies tick data. So we know exactly the path of the price movement on a tick basis. In other words, it's the actual movement that happened in history. Every single tick is recorded and we can therefore trace whether that price that came into that candle went for the high first or for the low first. And we know whether we've stopped out. The target and stop is an extreme example, but that is what happens with trading robots they they are they have to use tick data to to follow the logic in the actual robot so what i'm going to show you now is how to access the tick data service that i use now i've been using this tick data for most probably 10 years it is really fantastic i haven't had any problems and it's second nature for me to use this tick data they charge about 15 dollars a month but again you've got to look at it if you're playing golf you've got to buy a set of golf clubs you have to have the equipment to do the activity that you want so if you're trading forex it is an essential part of trading forex robots you have to have quality data otherwise you're wasting your time right so then i'm going to download the service i'm going to download the tick data that we need and and i'm going to show you how we select the tick data that uh, appropriate to the test that we're going to do and so as i said this is a practical uh, example i'm going to do all of those things right now so the tick data service that i use is called earreview.net and i have been using it for 10 years you can see they've been going for 15 years and they supply tick data not only for forex but for all trading in major in, uh, instruments and you'll see how vast that is so what you then do is here is their web website you can go straight to the tick data suite and download the tick data suite as you can see there's a 14 day trial so what a lot of traders do let's say they bought a new ea they go into the the 14 day trial optimize that ea completely during the trial and it hasn't cost them any money I'm in the business of trading Forex robots, so I need a monthly service where that, that data is updated. And by the way, the data is updated on a daily basis. So what happened yesterday is goes into your data set. So the year we are, start a 14-day trial, download the data suite now, I've already done that, so you will see the effect of downloading the data suite right now. Okay, now we're on a remote a computer. This computer has got the EA review system on it. And the license only covers one computer, so you've got to select the computer that you want it to run on. So I've opened the strategy test, and how you do that is you go view, 
and you click on strategy tester and it will appear at the bottom of your screen now the first thing you'll notice is that my strategy tester has all the things that yours has but it has these two extra boxes here and that is what the tick servers adds to your MetaTrader platform so let's say we want to test the euro pound which is the one we're going to test and we we want to use the tick data so i say yes i want to use the tick data then it will say okay let's go and have a look at what the tick data is all about so it says oh no i've got uh, four uh, 484 days of tick data and the most recent is the 26th of september and let's just see if we refresh that if that date changes no it doesn't so what i'm going to show you is is where the the tick data is actually managed and to do that we go to tick data manager i'm going to open that up big spider props up and here is the tick data manager and you can now decide how much data you want to download and for instance um, where's the one that we were looking at the euro pound there's the euro pound you can see i've got tick data from the first of june last year to the 26th so i'm just going to go like that and say new data start the download and a little bit instantaneously just update the last three days so there we are that's our so you can go and decide which ones you want to a download um, let's have a look at some of the the the, the Aussie I, I haven't downloaded anything now they have data available from 2003 so don't go and download that data it's going to fill your computer because the data gets stored on your computer so what you normally do is you click on those three dots there and you say oh the last year is good enough for me and let's start the download and look how fast the download actually happens very quickly and um, very soon you'll have a i'll have a year's worth of aussie data that i can test and you can see it's running up pretty quickly it's downloaded a whole years worth of data so this is a fantastic uh, database you can see when last the currencies have been updated and now you can see that one's updated right until yesterday so this is a fantastic way and and just let me show you the amount of uh, instruments that get, are, are offered uh, there's crypto there's everything you might ever want agricultural there's indices stocks stocks and stocks forever it's uh, i mean there's there's literally uh, most probably a, a couple of thousand um, instruments so it's a very vast service you can download any history that you want anyway so we've done our job here so we can basically just close this one and uh, the euro pound now if we click refresh has now refreshed till the 29th of september now there's a lot of things you can manage through here you can manage the gmt set of you can uh, set fixed or variable slip uh, 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 Spreads. you can go advance and set leverage if you like test 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 your results on different leverages and uh, there's a whole lot of other other areas that you can go uh, it gives a really uh, you can use margin uh, what what stop out what margin level is the stop out and all kinds so you can simulate real trading right down to a lot of detail that this tick, tick data service is really quite good Okay, so now that we're happy that we've got enough data, we say OK. And the, the data is now ready to be used by the service. So if we had to click here, the model of the service, and we use tick data, it will actually feed in, if there's an, a one minute candle, it will most probably feed in about 20 or 30 uh, ticks in in that candle to show how the trap the price traveled during that particular candle so it has a lot more data points than uh, your broker candles will ever have so whatever you enter there and we've just downloaded the pound so we go back to the uh, let's go to the pound uh, you, if you 
look there, then it brings up the pound. It says that's how much data I have. And uh, then you can use the pound up until that date. Just a note, just a note that if you are testing a strategy that let's say starts on the 1st of June uh, last year and runs to the 1st of June this year, remember to add history, about two months of history before the 1st of June last year because there might be indicators that use that history like the moving average or something like that and it needs that history to calculate the, the indicator setting. So a lot of people think, oh, I'm only going to test from one day to another and they only set that data as, as their history download download more just down, and there's an unlimited amount of uh, data that you can download okay so that covers the data section and as i say i cannot test without this tick data because of the quality and the quantity is unlimited and if you see, uh, if you look at some of the results, you'll see that the quality is superb. It's 99.9% .9 quality with no mismatch errors. Okay, so that's number one of the setup, have good data. So let's look at setting up some optimization. So the next step we need is a template, a test template. Now I'm going to simplify this, but um, uh, if you look at all of our EAs, or most of our EAs, have test templates supplied. And how you find these templates is you go into our main website, which is expertforex.com, you click on up-to-date robot results and settings, so you click on that. And then you'll see a whole lot of robots that we optimize every month for you and provide the optimized settings. Let's just go to one of these and I'm going to go to the profit retriever, for instance. And there are all the historical settings that have been provided. And a year is I'm just going to go to the same direction analysis that was done in September uh, in in August, so uh, it'll soon be updated for September, and there it is. And uh, we'll say, oh, let's sort these results uh, in, in profitability. Oh, we'll look at that one. That's how much was produced in a year. There is the actual set files that you can download. And let's go lower down where the testing details are shown. And there is the test template. So it gives the start the stop and uh, the start the step and the stop and there's the template that generated those results and there are the settings that generated those results so we supply a lot of information to our existing clients so let's go and have a look at the grid trend multiplier what we're going to do is we're going to test it on the euro pound and the reason why we're testing it on the euro pound, the euro pound is the most ideal currency for this particular type of robot because it is a sideways currency, but it also has very low volatility. So let's have a look. Okay, so we're going to trade that, that particular one. And what we do is we open the expert problem. And here we have the template that we saw earlier. So I'm just going to increase it as much as I can. What I'm going to do today is the most simple trading that is possible with the meta with the grid trend multiplier. But for those particular settings, you need a start point, a step, and a stop. For the grid trader, you actually need very few settings if you want to. So I'm going to actually uh, put zero settings in. Um, I'm not going to test all of them and I'm going to go down to the settings that we're going to be looking at and as you can see uh, the most important setting it needs is how big your lot sizing going to be. So the first thing to do is you say I want manual lot sizing and then you go down and you can set your manual your lot sizing. There it is. So I'm going to test lot sizing from point 0.1 and with steps of 0.1 right up to a lot of 0.7. So it's going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up right up to 0.7. So that is how I've now set up my template. And, uh, and then next most important point for grid trading is your grid size. So um, there's the grid size. I'm going to test from 6 with jumps of 2 
right up to 20. So, so in other words, the grid size is going to be determined by what this optimization comes out with. Now, to activate these where the optimizer will go and actually test all of those alternatives, that one and test that one at the same time, all you do is you click on the ones you want to test. Now, you'll see there's a few ones there that have values in them. I'm not going to worry about those for now uh, because if I leave them unticked, and we'll untick that one, if I leave everything unticked, it is only going to test those inputs there. And all the other inputs, oh, the, uh, the other input that uh, is important is that we are using a $10,000 account. That's not important. That's not important. And you can see all of them, all of them are zeros. Now, the, uh, the other thing is that once you, this is the buy settings. So I'm setting that for a buy transaction. But you don't have to do the same thing for the sales. You see they're completely different because all you do is you say automatic sell settings. So what it will do is it will copy the buy settings into the sell. So you don't need to do that. So I'm not even going to worry about that. And as you can see, mo all the settings are basically zero. Okay, so, so that's how simple this particular uh, testing is going to be. We're only going to test two settings to give us an idea of how profitable grid trading is. Uh, and then I'm going to just say, say, uh, uh, okay. I'm going to just say, okay. So it has those settings in it now so we're actually ready to optimize and we're going to be optimizing the the, the pound uh, the the grid trend multiply we're going to be using that currency we're not going to be using tick data we're going to be using so this is an optimization hack it's an advanced one but I'm, i'll make it i'll let you know about it is i'm going to use open prices and the reason is that if you use tick, it, these optimizations are going to take a huge amount of time, absolutely huge amount of time. But if you use open prices with a one minute candle, so in other words, the candle, you're only using the, the tiniest candle available, it will speed the optimization up. At the end, we're going to test the quality by comparing the results that we get with tick data but now's not the time to use tick, uh, full tick data uh, because it is going to take us too long so this is a hack that i use i use open prices and i use the one minute now you can only do this if there are no indicators involved because indicators run off the time frame that you set so the grid trend multiplier has no indicators and that's why i can use the one minute time frame so this is a bit of a hack that I'm using. I'm going to say a spread of one. Now, the, here's the trick. The, 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 the spreads are actually in points and not in pips. Uh, the spread, that if, I, if you see 10 there, it's 10 points, which is the same as one pip. And we're using tick data. So we're essentially ready to optimize. Now, before you optimize, you leave that block unticked because that's the block that tells the the EA to stop op optimizing. You leave it blank and you just click on start. And what that will do is it will generate the tick data. There it's generating the tick data that you need and then it will do one run of the test. And you do that to, to make sure that the, uh, that the tests are working. So it's only what it's done now, it's only it's run on those values over there so it's using those values over there and let's see what results we've got so it has generated profits of six thousand dollars on a drawdown of eight thousand dollars that's those are the main things we're going to be looking at you can see that the success rate is almost 99 percent on this trading strategy and uh, so so we know that it works so what this is going to do it's going to now if we now click on optimization it's going to just look at those ones and it's going to say okay i'm going to test for those values and i'm going to test for those values and produce the results so that is what we're going to do 
and off we go we go optimization and I'm just going to increase the size a little bit and we're going to click on start so it's going to the first thing it does it goes away and way and calculates how long this test will take and it should start telling us that pretty soon let's have a look okay it says oh this test is going to take me five minutes and i've already started there are 54 options that you've asked me to test i'm already on on option two and if you want to see the results there they are so here are the results and we'll just just uh, sort them out and um, I, I like sorting them out and also if you right click on here you can uh, sk skip useless results but i don't like skipping i want to see the useless results so because i want to see how many negatives there are and how many positive there are so far all of the results are positive as you can see so let's just continue um it's now on option eight it's got 56 options to run what i'm going to do is i'm going to let it run it's it's still got four minutes four and a half minutes to run obviously you don't want to just stare at the green line as it's going along so what i'm going to do is i'm going to let it run edit the video to at the point where it's finished and then we'll look at the results but now you know how to optimize an EA. You use uh, quality data, you use a template, you specify which settings you want to, to test various options on. You do a test run on only one on the current settings, make sure that the data is loaded and, the and, the, and that it runs, and then you do what we're just doing now and you optimize. And it will do the, all the hard work it will check all those various options for you 56 options it's testing right now and that's all you do need for the grid trend multiplier that's how simply it tra trades it only needs a grid size and a, a, and a lot size and it can uh, uh, generate huge amounts of money okay the results have finished and here we are it's, it's, they've done the 56 out of 56 it's taken four minutes in fact and let's have a look at the results so you open optimization and what i do is i sort the results in result order so so the result the profit results are pretty good it says thirty six thousand dollars over and we've only tested this year so it's about a nine month period uh, is not bad at all the problem here however with these results is that if you look sideways you see the drawdowns are incredibly high so the drawdowns are unacceptably high and we need to look at the type of results that we want to take uh, uh, further and what I do is I just look down here and I look for s smaller drawdowns uh, but all of the drawdowns exceed exceed the profits so that's unacceptable so what I what you now do now here's a trick is you and I'm gonna third one because the drawdowns are lower than the pre the others and I'm gonna take that I'm highlighting it so now you right click on the that and you set it set it as input parameters now the input parameters here say that the lot sizing should be 0.7 and the gap sizing should be 8 so let so you click that and then when we open our template we'll see that it 8 pips has been filled in here and 0.07 has been filled in there and if we now then just go OK and we run the optimization without it that, that clicked, if we run those settings and here we go, we're going to run them quickly. Should see about 31,000 profit. Let's just have a look. We look at the report and there's the 31,000 profit and there's the drawdown. And if we then look at the graph, you can see uh, the steady growth of income right until the final uh, date when it stopped trading and but you see the green line is actually your profit line and it's jumped around quite a lot 
and and it actually closed at one of its worst at its one of its worst levels not a problem um, and the if you've looked at my previous videos you'll see that's the cost of the carpet but it's also your final profitability so the profitability is not too bad at 31,000 but the drawdown is pretty bad at 40,000 right so now consider we are trading a $10,000 account your account cannot accommodate 40,000 drawdown your account might be able to accommodate maybe 8,000 or 6,000 drawdown. So what I do, and here's another trick, very important trick, is I say, okay, I don't want that to be 40,000. I want it to be, and I'm just going to take a number, 8,000. Now, 8,000 is an easy number because it's, it's uh, five times, if you multiply 8,000 five times, you get 40,000. So five is the number I'm looking for, because what I'm going to do now, and let's do that, is I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to lower the lot sizing by five times. So let's let's have a look at what the calculator says. It says uh, 0.7 divided by five is 0.14. So I'm going to change that. I should have been able to do it mentally, uh, 0.14. And then I'm going to run the results again and just see wh what they come. It, it might not work. Sometimes it doesn't work perfectly, but let's just run it again. And you can see it runs pretty quickly because it's running on open. Okay, this is what I want. So so now the drawdown is 8,000. It is manageable within a $10,000 account. And uh, the uh, profits have obviously gone down to, to $6,000. So now we have more realistic uh, settings because our, our settings now relate to our account balance. Very important step that a lot of traders ignore. But you've got to get your drawdowns to a really realistic level. Now, 6,000 might have been, even been a better level, but this is good enough for now. Because, the, and, and what we've now created is our base case. Our base case says that if you use so many lots, 1.14 lots, and you use so many uh, so much as your gap you are going to generate roughly six thousand dollars and your drawdown is going to be eight thousand dollars this is our base case and in fact what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a quick picture of the base case um uh, because now we're going to move on to optimize uh, proper optimization so we go okay so i've captured that picture Right, so just to orientate you where we are right now, we at the uh, we set the objectives, we set we set up for optimization with good data. We created a, a template which I've shown you. We created a base case results, which was the forty thousand uh, uh, drawdown with a thirty thousand result. We've adjusted the base case results. This is what we've just done. Step that very few traders ever do. And now we've got a nice, uh, a, a, a realistic base case. So now we're moving on to the four pruning option uh, to see if pruning helps this, the results in this EA. And then we're going to check the quality of results and, and so on. So just to orientate you where we are right now. So let's move on to the pruning side. Okay, so here we are. There's the the base case. We go there. We go into the settings again, and now we no longer need to optimize because we've we've got our base case settings there. So if we now only focus on the pruning options, we will see the difference that they make. So let's start with the pruning option. So number one pruning option and is stop trading after you've reached a profit level Pro profit 
target amount. Now, you, you need to know all the settings of this EA. So to do that, you need to refer to the user manual, which details all the settings, but also gives examples of, of how uh, they will impact trading. So it's fantastic to download the user manual, read all the settings so that you know what they do uh, before you do any testing. So I know that the profit target is a pruning method because what it basically says that when you've reached this profit close all the deals and start trading again now there are two settings that affect that that's that one and then there's one down here somewhere that says re-enter re-entry after grid closure so we it's already set for re-entry allowed if you don't want it you can just say uh, re-entry disabled but we want it uh, uh, the default is allowed so what it will do is it will go away and trade and find the profit uh, and once the, once you've reached your equity has reached that profit, it will close all the trades and start again. So why are we doing that? We trying to avoid that drawdown, the, the uh, lots of open trades. We close the open trades. We close all the open trades. Close all. But so it's it's a good pruning method. So how do we test it? We say all right, let's test profitability from ten dollars step it by ten dollars and we go right up to five hundred dollars it might be five hundred dollars that is the best option here so so that's the only one we're going to test uh, we don't need to test anything else so we go okay can we can now go straight into optimization and we click on start and it will start doing it. Uh, there are 50 options there. It's going to take a minute. We might as well just watch. So there are the op options happening right now. So let's have a look at what's going on. Um, first thing to, see, to do is, is look at the, uh, at the relationship between drawdowns and profitability. And already you can see a big improvement. You've got 3,000 there and you've got a drawdown that's lower so already a lot of the um, results are showing nice profits and low draw so we've really starting to experience what we want we want lower drawdowns and and good profits and previously the drawdowns were excessive they were bigger than the profits now they are lower in fact they're about 50 percent of the if you look at the top result there we're now down to a 50 percent result and these results are good for a ten thousand dollar account remember we're only testing an, a nine month period so a 50 percent return is fantastic in nine months with a small drawdown so every now and then I just click on profit because it's then so, oh, there's a, even a better one and it will run through. Let's see, it's only halfway um, and let's just wait for it to reach. So if you want to see what are the settings for that particular one, it says uh, if you have a tar target profit of $240, then it will close all the deals and start again. So $240 is, what is, is, is so far the best setting for this particular pruning so let's just carry on oh there's a 7000 one oh, it's getting better and better 310 okay so now you see how i'm using optimization to find to answer the question that i had what type of pruning is best for the grid trend multiplier and it's got five more items to take check all right there's one that's increased even more and it's actually even has a lower drawdown so we're really heading in the right direction yeah okay it's finished let's see the results final results and there we go S seven thousand which is actually big bigger than the six thousand that we had originally and the drawdown has dropped from eight thousand to three and a half thousand so that this method of pruning is really good. So let's do the same thing that we did before. We go right click, we input the parameters, 
and let's just make sure we know which is, it was 440 we go to settings we go there and there is the input for this particular one so it's going to run 440 with that setting with that setting and i'm going to say let's run it seven th seven thousand three three hundred and a nice and uh, reasonably, uh, uh, you, you'll see the profitability uh, drop because we are forcing a negative and positive closures all the time. So the, profit, uh, the, the success rate has dropped, but it is so much safer because we've got a lower drawdown. So I'm going to take a photo of this. This, this is our pruning method number one that we've tested. And there are the results for pruning number one. And I've saved that. All right. So let's, shall we do uh, pruning now, method number two? So what I'm going to do now is we know what uh, pruning number one is. We, we unclick that and we actually just make that naught because we know, um, we know that four, 440 was the number there that produced those beautiful results. And in fact, I'll make a note of it because so that I can remember that particular setting. All right, the sun's coming through my sun. The sun's coming through my through the roof, so uh, I'm, it's going to uh, now and then I'm going to be in the sun. Okay, so let's go on. So the next uh, the next pruning method is this one here optimum restart minimum ticket count <laughs> sounds very complicated to me but uh, that is the next one so let's go and see uh, see what all of that means okay to explain this one there is the optimum restart minimum ticket count uh, so if it's what it's saying is that if that setting is five it will look for a situation where there are five buys and five sells it will look for that specific situation and at that point it will close all of those trades so where when it's perfectly balanced it's got five buys and five sells it will close everything so if you put seven in there it would be seven buys or seven seven sells and it, uh, all of these will be closed at a loss but in the grid trend multiplier trading you'll see that profits get made consistently and then you do this loss so so what we're going to do is we're going to test if this one produces better results than the base case remember the base case was six thousand profit eight thousand drawdown so let's go and do that so there is the the a minimum tick count setting we're going to test from two to and i'm going to go to 30. let's just go to 30 and see what what the story is uh so it, it says oh mind you there won't be 30 buyers and 30 sales but we'll we'll put that in so i'm going to optimize i'm going to ask the optimization process to start at two increase by one and stop at three so we go like that and we we can go straight into optimization and away we go so now it's looking for situations where there are two buys two sells three buys three sells like that and there are 29 options that it's going to go through and it's uh, now um, going through those options and uh, for for instance two it wasn't very successful three is not bad four is not bad so let's just see and the other thing to look at is is it bringing the drawdown down so there it's running away it's going to test up until i think 20 or 30 open trades and uh, it will give us the best so uh, so i like finding out what the best one is um you'll notice there, there are no losses here so it's also a way of avoiding losses there might a, a loss might creep in now and then but um this result so far is pretty good there's a nice profit and the drawdown is roughly 50 percent of the profit so um, that's the kind of thing that we're looking for okay it's almost finished and just a few more to go let's resort the profitability hasn't changed much so that that is definitely uh, if we look at a four four balancing number that would most probably be 
the best. So just to remind you what, what, what it's looking for, it's looking for four buys and four sells open at the same time. Exactly four and exactly four, and then it will close all the transactions. So there it's signaled that it's uh, finished, and there are the results. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in, set it as the input parameter. We go and have a look at it. And everything's naught except that particular setting, and we still have our original settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that again as a single setting. And we look at the results. So 6,600 with a drawdown of 3,400. Uh, uh, the first one is actually still better, but this is also a huge improvement on the 6,000 profit and 8,000 drawdown. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do, let's take that photo. Okay, so let's move on to the next pruning function. So we go into settings. We now make that naught again so that we can m be sure that it's a clean way of um, checking the results. And then we get to maximum ga gap between buys and sells. In other words, if an upward trend happens, what will happen is the buys will cash in and the sells, there will be lots of sells. So what you could end up having is you could have one buy and five uh, and seven sells, that type of thing. So what this looks at is the gap between them. So if there's one buy, seven sells, the gap is six. So what it will say is if the gap reaches that level, what must I do? So it says, do you want to trade? So it's the next setting. So I'm going to highlight that one too. So the next setting says, prune the highest loss. That's one of the options. Or trade with the trends. So it changes the direction and trades with the trends. So we've got two elements to test here. Whether uh, the trade with the trend option or the prune the highest loss option is a be is the better one and the other element that we need to check is what setting is the best so i'm going to move that so we're going to test those those two options and let's set it and uh, all we need to do is say click on optimization and start so let's see how many options there are that will be tested. Okay, so it's testing 58 options. It's going to take about three minutes. And um, again, what I might do is pause the video until the testing is finished. But just looking at the initial results aren't good. You've got high pro uh, uh, low profits, high drawdowns. Low profits, high drawdowns. So initial results aren't good let's see when it's all finished in about three minutes time okay we are almost finished in fact i think we have and there's 58 results produced it's taken over four minutes and let's gonna have a look at the results and uh, there we are and um, some of the results have actually come out reasonably but but you can see the gap between the drawdown and the profit is not as good as the previous, but it has improved. The, the profitability has gone up from 6,000 to 7,000, and the drawdown has come down from 8,000 to 6,000. So the pruning has worked, but it is not the optimum pruning method. So what I'm going to do, highlight it, put it in, set it as input parameters we go and have a look at it and so uh so the answer is 29 and prune the highest loss item and we then run it and look there it is 7000 so 10 a thousand increase and that's come down to uh roughly a 2000 saving on drawdown so the results are good and i'm going to take a 
a picture it's not as good as the others but let's take a picture and look at the final one so the last one is the target maximum count of buy and sell open trades so this setting looks at the number of matching pairs so for instance in this example here let's say you have four buys and five sells the matching pairs are five four at that point then it goes up to five buys and six uh, sells the matching pairs are five so what it will then do is it will trim and this is the difference between the pre, uh, pre it will trim one of those and one of those to bring the matching pair below that setting so it's a trimming pruning system rather than closing all of them as as that happens so a slight variation on one of the previous ones and let's go and test that one so all we have to do here is put a number in there so we're testing from one and we'll go to 30 like we've done with the others and we'll say uh, there are no other settings except what we're going to be testing and uh, let's do that so again we can go straight into the testing i'll just click on optimization and we click on start and it must probably take uh, four minutes as the others have let's have a look oh no this is going to take shorter it's going to be um one minute and let's have a look uh, we could actually just see the results as they happen okay so now these ones aren't that great because you, we're having low profits and high drawdowns so um, let's see after it's run its full 29 options whether that trend continues in which case this is most probably one of the least attractive options okay we're coming to the end of this test uh, there's only one more to run let's see what those options bring and click on optimization results and we see the best result was 7,000 but the drawdown is 6,000 is the drawdown so it hasn't made a whole it has improved it but hasn't it, the income's gone up the drawdown's gone down slightly but that's not the the best ratio that we can find let's have a look if there's better ratios no they're pretty constant so I'm going to highlight that set as input and then run that and we go report there's the result and there's the result so i'm going to take a picture of that one right the skylight is in full action at the moment but just to remind you of what we've done uh, we created a base case where the profits were basically six thousand and the drawdowns were eight thousand we then tested four pruning options and here are the pruning options number one generated a an improved profit and a quite a good draw, uh, improvement on the drawdown same thing there same thing there and the same thing there so all three all four of the pruning options were were pretty good but the first one is superior in that it's got got a the biggest income and the best ratio between drawdown and income than the others so let's go and restore that first option so we go in here we go back over here we get rid of that last test that we did and we now the only difference i'm going to make here is i'm going to use every tick because this is the final phase of our setting establishment and therefore we want the most accurate result so it's only at this phase when i've got my final final answer that i start using true tick data and there it is every tick the most precise method and there we go and um i'm just going to run it now you'll notice that it takes a quite a long time when you run tick and that is why I don't use tick when I'm testing I use a hack to make the testing go faster and hopefully this tick result will be the same or better 
than the actual result that we've come up with. So let's have a look. Okay, the tick data run is almost finished. Let's see what the results are. Oh, there we go, it finishes. We go to our report. And now we see 99% accuracy. We see a result that's actually better than the income that was reported earlier, but the drawdown is actually better. So we've actually come out with great results. The tick data is better than our test data. And I'm going to take a picture of that. Okay, so there we are. The years, the test data, the 7335. Oh, shit. Sugar. And here is the tick data result, which is higher in income and much lower in drawdown. Really fantastic outcome for this exercise that we've just done. So most importantly, save these settings. So what we do is we go back to settings, we go into properties, and there are the settings that we want to save. We say save. And we say, um, what should we call this? A Euro Great British Pound Pruning Test Settings. And we save that. Okay, so now when you, if we want to use it again, you just go to load and you there are the settings. There I've created a set file of the settings. Okay, so now the next step that we have here is to review the results on, on charts. Now there are two ways you can do it. Uh, you can go visual mode and just run those settings in visual mode. You can adjust the speed over here and you can run and actually you can see step by step how the trades happen. Now that's going to take a long time so I'm not going to do that. You can go and try that. Um, you've seen a quite couple of my videos the way I've done exactly that. So that's how you do it. You just run it right now. If I click on stop it will create a visual mode and it will create the entries as if you're trading. You'll now the other way of doing it is that after you've run any test of these tests you just click on open chart. Now I'm going to do that open chart and it will show you the trades now the please bear in mind this is one minute charts but i'm going to try and fix them up so that you can see the charts so first thing i do is i um, remove the grid and then i'm also make it a bit bigger so that you can see the chart and then i'm actually going to make it into a four hour chart boom okay so now you can actually see the trades as they've happened uh, and the ones that have created, and in fact, I'll just minimize this a little bit, uh, and you can now see. So let's go right to the beginning, um, and all right, so there's the beginning, the 1st of January. There are the, all the trades that happened, all happened there, and it then closed at a nice gain of 450 dollars. And then the same thing happened, lots of trades to do. do, do Tra closed at 450 lots of trades closed at 450 and so on so there's another closure there's another closure and that clearly is the best way of trading the grid trend multipliers to use that trading that pruning system uh, while you're trading so there we go and there we look at this there's a huge up and down closed at a profit profit Big trend, closed at a profit. Close, that's most probably a weekend gap that happened there. And and lots of closures of one, I think two. Or there might be even three closures there. Another one, another one, another big trend. Here's a huge trend. Let's see what that trend was like. 200 pips, that trend. From there to there, 200 pips. Yet it closed at a nice profit. Another big trend to do down, closed at a profit. So, so this is another way of showing that the grid trend multiplier can trade very safely 
using huge trends. I mean, I mean the gap size was eight, so there were quite a lot of uh, uh, gaps opened in a 200 pip trend. Here's another huge trend. Here's another huge trend. So um, you can, uh, you know, a lot of people are scared of trading the grid trend multiplier because of trends, uh, but clearly. If you use it in co combination with pruning and using the most appropriate currency like the euro pound is less likely to have 500 or 700 trends that they do have trends but they controllable trends and they correct okay so that's how you view the results on charts there those two methods that i've mentioned uh, there you view them on visual mode you run them on visual mode or you just open the chart change what i like about it you can change the time frame and view them uh, quite nicely as we've just done now i hope you've enjoyed this video as much as i have because those are fantastic results those settings can now be demo traded for a week or two just to get co comfortable and so <coughs> And certainly, you could then consider them for live trading. The total drawdown in the end was just under 30%, which is very acceptable for this kind of trading. And you can see how pruning has helped to keep that down. The income that was generated of 7500 was really acceptable uh, over a nine a month period you can see that you would have doubled your account if trading carried on until December so let's quickly just review what what's happened here uh, we've set an objective for the test which we've met we've uh, found we set up for the optimization by using quality data and we've created a template you saw the template very really simple template that I've used uh, we've created a base case. Those were the 6,000 and 8,000 base case. We've uh, adjusted that because we've set up 40,000 drawdowns a little bit too much. We brought it down to a realistic level. And then we've tested the four pruning results. We've checked the quality of results. In other words, I've converted the results into tick data, the most accurate method of uh, testing and then and you only do that at the end you don't do it in the beginning it's going to take you years to do the testing uh, then we've viewed the results on on the charts which showed us the logic that was used how all of those trades get consolidated into a 450 uh, dollar profit and boom it closes everything and, and everything starts again fantastic uh, logic and uh, this is what we're doing right now we're reviewing the process so if you have any questions please uh, mention them in the commentary facility uh, in the youtube video um, any links to items mentioned in this video will be in the description of the video as well as in the commentary of the video so from me, Alex Deploy, I hope you've learned a lot about optimization. I hope you've learned a lot about the grid trend multiplier. So from me, cheerio.